So first let us try to visualize this problem by drawing a diagram. So we have this very long wire that is shooting upwards, and then somehow in, at infinity it meets up with this coaxial tube, and it's going to bring the current down along its surface. So there's along the surface of this cylindrical surface, there is also a current going down. And the purpose of this coaxial tube is so that there is no magnetic field outside. So if you use Ampere's law, you'll see that the magnetic field outside is equal to zero. So the first question is, what is the direction of the induced electric field? So as you know, there is a magnetic field going on inside over here. And as this I changes, the magnetic field is going to change. And as that changes, there's going to be an induced electric field. So we, first we need to find the direction of that field. And the answer is actually it's longitudinal. And the reason is by the same argument as, uh, as the case of the solenoid. So when we use Ampere's law to find the magnetic field inside the solenoid, we use a symmetrical argument to argue that the uh, magnetic field is pointing upwards in a longitudinal direction. So you can see a kind of parallel between Ampere's law in, and Faraday's law. Ampere's law, you have uh, the, yeah, the uh, current that's generating the magnetic field. And in Faraday's law, you have this magnetic field that's generating the induced electric field. And then they, and they work the same way. If you look at the Maxwell's equations of the two laws, they're pretty much the same. It's just that the things that are causing the, causing the fields are different. So in Ampere's law, we have current that's causing everything. And here we have the field, uh, magnetic field that's causing the electric field. So by the same argument, we can actually carry the argument we used in, for the solenoid uh, to the situation. And since the magnetic field is going around, it's the same way the solenoid is, the current around the solenoid is, we can also guess that the electric field is also longitudinal. So it's going in this sort of general direction. And so for part A, the answer is longitudinal. For part B, we actually need to find the magnitude of the electric field. So first of all, let us remind ourselves what Faraday's law tells us. So this line integral is equal to the change in magnetic flux. So uh, for the loop that we're going to consider, I'm just going to draw this rectangle here. So we're going to go in this direction. And if we're going in this direction, the flux is going to be measured as positive for a magnetic field that's pointing inwards. So that's dictated by the right-hand rule. So first of all, let us try to find the, find the line integral. So the, for these parts over here, the, uh, there is no induced magnet, uh, electric field. So for these parts, uh, this line integral is just going to be equal to zero. So that's uninteresting. So, so, so uh, now we need to consider this part over here. And since we know the electric field is going in this general direction, uh, once it hits these portions over here, it's going to cause a 90 degree angle. And if you dot something that's 90 degrees, so DL is going to go in this direction, the, uh, in the horizontal direction, E is going to go in the vert vertical direction, and then they're going to end up to be equal to zero. So that's going to be equal to zero for these two sections over here. So the only thing that's contributing to the line integral is this section over here. And since it's parallel, so the electric field is parallel to this line, so we can just put the magnitude of the electric field times the length. So I'm just going to call this length L. So don't worry about the value of L, it's going to cancel out eventually. So now we need to, so let's try to find the flux. And then recall uh, the magnetic field caused by this kind of wire is given by mu i divided by 2 pi r. So r is the distance from the wire. So you can derive this pretty easily with Ampere's law. So I'm not going to repeat that over here. And then we're going to uh, integrate uh, along this entire surface. And uh, in our case, dA is going to point inwards into the page as dictated by the right-hand rules, since we're taking the line integral in this direction. So dA, so you can imagine this as being like uh, so I should use a different color. So this being a, x, uh, being a y axis, this being an x axis. So you can just, uh, for dA, it's just kind of like dx dy. And uh, for the vertical direction, I'll just call that dy. It goes from 0 to L. And for the dx direction, actually, I should use dr, since I'm using r over here. So this is the r axis. So dr. 
So now in this case, it goes from uh, so the entire uh, radius of this coaxial tube is equal to a, so it ends at a. And over here, this is going to be whatever distance we're interested in, and we call that s. So from s to a. So immediately, you can see that for dy, uh, there are no y terms inside, so I can just uh, so, so, uh, multiply this inside. And then for the dr, I get natural log r from s to a. So let's just carry this result to this other page. So I get mu l i divided by 2 pi natural log a over s. And now we're interested in the change in the flux. So the only thing that's varying according to time is the uh, current i. I is equal to i is equal to i naught cosine omega t. So taking the derivative, so it's a negative sign, I get so cosine becomes negative sine omega t times omega. So the sides these cancel out. So in the end we get mu i naught l two pi. So there's also a omega natural log a over s sine omega t. And uh, going back to Faraday's law, this is equal to the line integral. So as you see, the l's they cancel out. So which is, as I've said before, you don't need to worry about the value of l. So it cancels out. So in the end, you get this answer. And uh, if you check the signs of the answer, you'll see that it makes perfect sense. So in this case, uh, when E is positive, that means E is indeed going along this direction. If E is negative, then it's going along the opposite direction. And you see that this is true. So as T begins from 0, you see that sine, uh, the sine omega T is initially positive. So if it's positive, it's going this direction. And as uh, T starts from 0, you see that for this function over here, cosine looks something like this. So it's going to de decrease at the beginning. So when it decreases, this magnetic field is going to become weaker. So there's going to be less flux pointing inside. And so if you imagine if there's a wire over here, it's go uh, nature is going to induce this electric field, which is going to cause a current that is going to try to restore the balance in the flux. It's going to try to restore the lost flux. You see that if the current is moving in this direction, it, it is exactly in accordance with Lenz's law. So you see that if there's a current going in this direction, there will be contributing more magnetic field inwards to the page, trying to restore the lost uh, magnetic field due to the decrease in I. So you see that the signs, they make perfect sense.